hello all in today's session we will be discussing about different variants of uh, gradient descent algorithm we have discussed a gradient descent algorithm in the previous session and how this algorithm will try to find the updated weight where the error function is minimum so these are the different uh, variations which are used by a gradient descent algorithm one is stochastic gradient descent algorithm which is nothing but uh, random gradient descent algorithm where it will take random uh, training examples to find the forward pass and backward pass second is mini batch gradient descent and the third one you have batch gradient descent algorithm also called as vanilla gradient descent algorithm let's let's have a quick review of previous session about gradient descent algorithm the same steps will be followed by all the three the only difference is how many training examples will be used to do update the weights so we have selected some random value of weight calculated the slope of this to find the direction and calculated the next step size so taking the random value of weight finding the slope to find the direction and taking the step size we have tried to move towards the local minima value also called as the local uh, minimum cost function where we are finding out the updated weight where our loss function is minimum the point which i haven't mentioned in the previous session about this gradient descent algorithm is the gradient descent algorithm tries to take larger steps when it is far away from the local minima and as it reaches the minimum value it tries to take the small steps and reach the minimum value because if it goes on taking the larger steps then there might be a possibility of missing the minima value so to avoid this as it reaches the close to the local minima it tries to take the smaller steps and the formula which we have discussed was w new is equal to w old minus eta times of slope where eta is called as the learning rate or scaling factor and we have discussed the cases where what happens when eta is very large or very small so let us discuss all these three variations taking a simple example consider this training data where i have four training examples that is the data of four students x1 x2 x3 input and i would like my machine to find out y value so based on the science grade marks based on the chemistry and number of hours he spending to study i'll try my machine to find out the grade marks of max so i have x1 x2 x3 and y value now in stochastic gradient descent what we do is we will try to take only one training example at a time and carry forward and backward pass to update the weight so this type of gradient descent algorithm where only one training example is taken at a time is called as stochastic gradient descent and it is not compulsory that it will take only the first training examples it may take any random training example to have forward backward and update the weight hence it is called as stochastic gradient descent which stochastic means random values in the next iteration it will take the second training example random training example third iteration and so on so as i have four training examples it takes four passes to complete one epoch now how about if i take batches instead of take taking only one training example at a time here i have taken batch size as 2 why 2 i'll tell you so i'll be taking these two training examples and continue with the operation of forward pass backward pass and then update the weight in the second epoch or second pass i will take the next two training examples continue with the operation of forward pass backward pass and update the weight to find the local minima here the local minima is calculated and here the local minima is calculated whichever is minimum value that will be finalized for our training example now why did i take two here is you need to take a value of batch which should be less than the number of training examples so i have here four training examples so i have taken two less than four and also it should be greater than 1 if it if i take one value then that gradient descent is nothing but stochastic gradient descent so i need to take the value which is greater than 1 and less than the training examples 
Now what if I take the entire batch? It looks something like this, where all the four training examples are carried out for forward pass, backward pass and update the weight. This type of algorithm is called as batch gradient descent algorithm. So each time we use the entire training data set, it is called as epoch. In stochastic, as I am taking one training example at a time and as I have four training examples, it carries four passes to complete one iteration. Mini batch, two batches I have selected, so it carries two passes to complete one iteration. And batch gradient descent, it will take one pass to complete one epoch, also called as iteration. Now among all the three examples that is stock, batch and mini batch, we can say that batch uh, gradient descent as it is taking the entire data set for training, it may take very less time. We may think like that, okay, it is taking very less time to move towards the uh, operation of gradient descent algorithm that is carry out with the forward pass, backward pass and find the updated weight. But this is not the case. Why? Because each time we want to update the weight, we have to take the entire data set. That is, if I have a data set of 100 million neurons or 100 million training examples, in the one step, it will take 100 million neurons, continue with the forward pass, backward pass. Second step, again, the same 100 million neurons will be taken. That means it is making it more computationally expensive as well as computationally complex when you are making... Um, larger data sets. So, we will consider few drawbacks of this batch gradient descent algorithm and in the next slides we will st study how to remove those drawbacks. So, the first drawback is not all the cost functions are, are as simple balls as we have studied earlier like this one. You may have complex error functions also like this which has many number of local minima points and one global minima point. That means you may have many holes, you may have irregular curves also, which makes the machine uh, very difficult to reach the minimum error. For example, we will see now what happens if I make use of batch gradient descent algorithm for such kind of complex error functions. Remember that during weight initialization, always the starting point is randomly selected value. Uh, if Suppose this is my starting point of uh, this gradient descent algorithm, the error will start descending the small mountain to the right side and will move in this zigzag direction and reach the minimum value. But this minimum value is local minima. That is, this is the minimum value of this curve, not the entire cost function. So, this is local minima, not the global minima. So, hence, batch gradient descent algorithms cannot be used for such type of complex error functions. The second drawback is as it is ta taking the entire training data, it will make use of all 100 mu million neurons for taking the calculations which makes more complex calculations. So to avoid do, uh, these two pitfalls, the another approach was introduced apart from batch gradient descent algorithm which is called as a stochastic gradient descent algorithm. So in stochastic gradient descent algorithm, the algorithm randomly selects the data points and goes through the gradient descent one data point at a time. So you can see I in this graph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 random data points are selected to reach the minimum value. Among these three minima values, this will be less compared to that of these two and this will be considered to be as the local minima or the updated weight at which the cost function is minima. These are the differences between batch uh, gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent. You can see here a straight path to reach the global minima value in batch gradient descent. Why? Because we are taking a step after we will compute the gradient for the entire training data in batch gradient descent and we can see that it is a smooth straight line, almost a straight line. Whereas in stochastic gradient descent, you can see that the path towards the global point is not direct. It is in a zigzag direction. You can see in a two-dimensional graph for both batch gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent. And this is because 
uh, stochastic gradient descent in every iteration it will try to fit just a single training example which makes it faster but will not guarantee that every step will take us to the minimum value of uh, cost function now as it has come close to this global minima once it comes close to this global minima it will continue to bounce and will never settle but ending at this global minima point which is the main purpose of this gradient stochastic gradient descent algorithm will be achieved using this method only so hence i can conclude that stochastic gradient descent is performing better as well as faster compared to that of batch gradient descent algorithm coming to the next mini batch gradient descent algorithm in mini batch i can consider to be as it is a compromise between batch and stochastic which where it is taking batches of training data to have forward pass backward pass and update the weight the common batch size which was mentioned was 256 so these are the uh, diagrams which differentiate between these three batch mini batch and stochastic mini batch is considered to be as a compromise between these two when i take batch and stochastic we prefer stochastic gradient descent when the data set is very large so this is the end of the different variations of uh, gradient descent algorithms in the next ses session we'll do with the back propagation algorithm which is our last topic of unit 1 thank you all